Okay, so um, this is how you use Game Fruit uh, basic tutorial. So you can click on it in the favorites if it's in the favorites there, or you can just search for it with Game Fruit like that. It's the first result there. And just click on Make Games. And you can either sign up, if you click there, you'll sign up with your email address or you can log in with Facebook, which is what I do. Um, it would usually ask you for your password and your um, email address, which you would have set up, um, but I think mine's already there. So just a new level, new platform level. So a platform game is where you run across the screen like Super Mario Brothers or something like that. Um, so you've got a few um, options here. Um, terrain is like stuff that um, the characters walk on. Items is things that they can pick up. Um, characters is the player plus the um, enemies. Um, marketplace is where you can pick up other random bits and pieces. Um, it's called marketplace, but actually most of the stuff there is on on their free, um, developed by Game Fruit users. So you can download those and put them into your games. So um, you might want to start by sticking in some terrain. So you click on any of these and you can just put them in like that. Um, these ones which are called brushes are kind of smart. So if you put one next to it, then it'll sort of, they'll all join together. Whereas if you do like this one, it doesn't make the decisions for you like if you put that there then it's still gonna be the end of a thing um, right clicking on anything will give you options so um, with terrain you can make it um, background so it doesn't doesn't really do anything solid so that you can't walk through it cloud can you can sort of jump up through it, but you'll land on top of it and Spike kills you. So it's got a few things that you can set it to. With characters, um, you can only put your player in once because there's only one player in the game. Um, if you want to change who the player is, you just go and choose something. Um, and that's that button is set it um, set this icon as the player. Okay, so we'll pop this guy in as our player. Um, we can alter again by right clicking, alter his properties. Um, you know, change how how much health he has to start off with. Um, starting weapon, being a pacifist I tend not to give them weapons um, and you can give them a jetpack, that's good fun, you can fly around and so on, so you just click save changes um, and then you can put some bad guys in, so bad guys um, you can only put your player in once but bad guys you can click on you can put as many bad guys in as you want. If um, if there's no terrain under somebody when they start, they'll probably just fall into the void, so it might not be a good thing to do. Um, you've got a few options like um, moving. Moving is just moving around the screen. Um, brush is 
putting things in. Um, Erase is taking things out. That's moving around. So that's kind of, that's like right clicking automatically is left click for, you can just do it for everything. But mainly if you just stick with that and right click and brush erase. Those are the main tools that you'll use. The hand tool moving around is pretty handy too. Um, this is an overview of the entire game area so if you click you can do a, do a very quick um, movement around the entire game area. Um, what else? So um, Items tend to have um, default behaviors, like a coin gives you 10 points, I think. Um, let's see what its default behavior is. So you can edit the behavior of this item or all, all coin items. So um, if you just want to do it once and you know cover all the coin items, you can do it that way. Let's see what's in there for the coin item. Yeah, add score, points to add 10. Okay, so you can, or you can choose that um, a coin gives you health if you want. It's up to you really, it's your, your game, so you can choose. Um, so these are all predefined um, sort of functions which things can do. And you'll see they relate to these things. So you can have a teleporter so if I stick a teleporter in there, edit this this item, so you can set the location of the teleporter. So where is the teleporter going to go? It's going to go there. Okay, so that's doing that. Um, so yeah, you can mess around with all the predefined stuff. Um, the last thing that you can do is um, make new behaviors. People can make new behaviors for things altogether. Like, for example, if it's a door, then if I click on this, if I go edit script, script is like the very customizable part of game fruit. So. This is a script editor, um, so it's got a big um, script on it already, um, so if I just chuck that out, so the yellow ones um, are events, which is kind of like the basic thing, so when, when this door is first created, what will happen? So we have to put something in this little gap here to say, when the door is first created, this will be how it behaves. So we can make it um, actually for this, it might be easier to show you one that I made already. So close that. If we load this is the one that I've done a little bit of work on. So I'll have a look at the script that I made for this door. Okay, so when the store is first created, ignore player interaction with me. When it receives a message of open door, allow player interaction with me. So that's um, there's a key which says, when the player touches me, send a message of open door. So the key
key gets touched by the player, sends a message to this thing which allows player interaction with the door and when touched by the player go to windscreen. So that's what happens when the player touches but this is going to block it off so this one needs to kind of um, negate that one. So this is kind of the logic of, of this door is when it's first created nothing nothing works on it. When it receives this message of open door um, it becomes active for the player and when the ta player touches it and interaction is allowed um, you win. So the overall effect is when you get the key it opens the door and you can end the game by going to the door. So I'll show you the key script which that is related to. So let's have a look at the key down here. Okay, so when touched by the player is a sound, is the red thing. Uh, the inventory doesn't really matter. Um, the key dies, i.e. it disappears, and it sends a message of open door to all objects. So that's that message which that door is going to get. That, that means it effectively opens to player interaction. So you just kind of... Um, can play around with these different categories and see what um, and the and the boxes are like certain shapes, so you can you can kind of tell um, what things go and where. So the player, this this kind of red shaped box goes into this type of hole, so it's kind of like Lego. And yeah, so um, obviously the scripts are quite, you can go down that rabbit hole quite deep, but um, people can have a lot of fun before they get into that stuff. So um, you can just play with the predefined stuff and have a lot of fun. And if you want to, you can get into a little bit of um, programming and coding through through that nice, easy Lego type interface. So that's what I know about Gamefruit. Um, hope that was helpful.